What is going on guys back with a new video and in today's video I want to talk about 15 plus features that I'd like to see added to the Meta Ray-Ban display second generation. So stick around. Welcome back guys and let's get straight into it. So number one, the first thing and probably the biggest thing that I'd like to see added is a binocular display. So in other words, two displays, so a display in each eye. Now this is the biggest uh, gripe that I've heard so far about the Meta Ray-Ban displays is having the display in only one eye. Now the tech is gonna cost way more and the glasses are gonna cost way more in my opinion to have two displays. However, if Meta can put two displays and keep the price around the same or maybe a hundred to two hundred dollars more, I think they'd have a hit. Number two, and probably something that they'll never do, and that is add landscape video mode. Now there are a lot of people that do like creating content in portrait mode. However, that's why there should be the option to record in portrait or landscape mode. So Mark, if you're watching this, which I know you're not, we want the option. Give us the option to record in landscape if we want or portrait. And one of the biggest reasons that I got into the Meta and the Ray-Ban ecosystem, which was with the Meta Ray-Ban Stories, which is what their first generation of Ray-Bans were called. And the reason that I got those was that I wanted to use those to incorporate into my workflow into creating YouTube videos. And I wasn't able to properly do that since they record in portrait mode. So I think out of 100%, maybe about 70% of people who purchase these glasses are content creators. And I know YouTube Shorts and TikToks and Instagram and Facebook posts, which of course are four huge major platforms, you're gonna to wanna to post in portrait mode. However, what about YouTube? YouTube is one of the biggest content creation platforms. Now don't get me wrong, you can post these videos to YouTube. However, they will be posted in portrait mode and we'll have black bars on the side, which looks horrible. And one of the options that I was saying to do was to punch in on the footage. A lot of people were asking me, how do you punch in? And to answer that, I don't mean punch in using the glasses. I mean, punch in an editing software after the fact and you know zoom in on the footage and get a 16 by nine uh, landscape video. Back to what I was originally saying, we wanna see landscape video recording in Meta Ray-Ban display generation two. The third feature that we'd like to see is a wider field of view. So right now, the camera is pretty wide and you can capture a good amount of footage in there. However, why not put a even wider field of view, more like a action camera style and more like a camera that they put inside of the vanguards, which I can see why they use separate cameras and separate features for each different pairs of their glasses. And that's because they wanna be able to sell each one of their different brands and different lines, right? So each one of their glasses has a designated feature they're starting to intertwine them a lot more now. So the Ray-Ban Metas and the Oakley Metas are intertwined a lot more now. However, when the Oakley Houstons first launched, they were the only ones that supported 3K video. Back to what I was saying, we would like to see a wider field of view on generation two. The matte color option. Meta, Mark, if you're listening, I know you're not. We want a matte pair of these glasses. Now, don't get me wrong, shiny frames are okay. They'll do, as you can see, they work. But matte glasses are just so much better, especially when it comes to having transition lenses. So these type of glasses, the shiny look, look great when the transition lenses are transitioned into sunglasses because shiny frames look better with sunglass polarized lenses, like if they're actual sunglasses, not reading glasses and daily worn glasses. So if you're using these transition lenses, they're gonna be daily worn glasses, so you're wearing them throughout the day and night. You want something that blends in with them in terms of the frames, and in my opinion, the matte frames and the matte look blends in a lot better with the transition lenses. So it only makes sense if you're gonna ship only transition lenses in the glasses to have a matte frame option at least, is create a smartwatch that can act as the neural wristband that way, instead of using the wristband, I can also have a smartwatch and cut out having to use both. Now, I did hear some rumors that Meta was gonna release a smartwatch to do exactly that, and that is to replace the neural wristband and to be able to basically enter the smartwatch market, which I think would be a great way for them to enter the smartwatch market, for them to have this neural wristband incorporated into the band itself. So let's say they incorporated that and added a smartwatch into the bundle in generation two for around a thousand, maybe 1200 bucks. That'd be pretty awesome. 
Next feature I'd like to see added is a wider range of prescription lens options. Right now they currently only offer a plus four to a minus four prescription. I'd like to see that further extended that way everyone can enjoy a pair of meta Ray-Ban displays. Next up is I'd like to see generation two have a better rollout and more availability. So in my opinion, the first generation of Meta Ray-Ban displays had the most worst, horrible rollout I've ever seen a product have in terms of a big company. And I've seen smaller companies do worse. Come on, Meta, this is a huge company with billions of dollars. Everything about the product was a complete flop, right? So the keynote was a complete flop. All the live demos completely failed. The rollout was complete garbage. No one could get one. Everybody had to schedule a demo and it was only available in big, huge cities. And even then it was even scarce. We had people driving hundreds and hundreds of miles away, taking flights on airplanes just to be able to grab these. I mean, that's ridiculous when Meta is a huge company and should be able to distribute to more places. Now I understand that before they developed these and released these, they did say that they were gonna do a small rollout and not have a ton of these available. So I can see that they did kind of warn us ahead of time that there wasn't gonna be a lot available, but still, come on, you could do a better job at rolling out a product than what you did. And again, just to touch basis on the availability, if you're not gonna have live demos and you're not gonna have people available in Best Buy stores and lens crafters and Ray-Ban locations and sunglass huts, actually they're at the physical store to do the demos, then at least let us order them online. So basically what they were doing was if you didn't schedule the demo, then you couldn't even order the pair. You have to get an SKU or a SKU number. That way you can enter that associated with an email, then you could order them online. There was no way to order them just by going online and actually ordering them. So I mean, horrible, horrible rollout. So I would like to see a better rollout and more availability in the second generation. Now, the next thing I'd like to see added is something I kind of touched basis on earlier and then it was I would like to see more tech added for the same price tag. So if they can add two displays or add even more features, maybe more app integration, you know, better iMessage support, just better integration and, and be able to have it for the same price tag, that's gonna be awesome. So again, that's the feature I'd like to see added in the next generation is better features for the same price tag. The next thing I'd like to see is I'd like to see them thinner. So they aren't super big and you know ridiculously thick. I've seen way thicker glasses that look absolutely ridiculous that I would never, ever, ever wear. And I've seen people wear them. So again, there are people that wear really, really thick, huge glasses just to be able to enjoy the AR experience. So I think these kind of blend in between the two, between those big, huge, thick, you know, monstrosity AR glasses and the regular Ray-Ban Metas, which seem really nice in a really thin frame. These kind of seem like in between there. So I'd like to see these thin down more towards more like the Ray-Ban Metas. The next thing I'd like to see is them to be lighter. So I always have to lift them up. Now they're not horribly heavy, but they are heavy enough to where they do slide down a little bit and I have to keep picking them up. Now, it's not constant. I'd say every about once an hour, I have to pick them back up. Now there are certain ways to circumvent that and to uh, get rid of that. And that is to add nose pads, which actually add some grip right where your nose is. And so they don't fall down as easy. There's also pieces that you can get for the back of both arms to help them stop from sliding forward. However, that's just another thing I have to buy and add on. And I'd like to see that them be just lighter in general. So I'm sure that they probably will be in the second generation and that's something that I'm hoping for. The next thing I'd like to see is more apps in the second generation. Now again, Mark, if you're watching, if you can only add one app, and I know you can add probably as many apps as you want. If you can only add one, please add YouTube so we can watch YouTube videos inside of our glasses. Now I know that's probably gonna drain the battery and that's probably one reason it wasn't added, but I'd love to see that. Also, please add the feature to be able to charge these while we're using them so we could watch YouTube videos continuously. So, you know, what if there was a charging mechanism back here on the back where we could just grab the charging cable, attach it to the back when we're at home or anywhere, maybe at work, wherever we are, attach it. That way they don't run out of battery and we can watch videos and you know never have to worry about the battery life. 
The next thing I'd like to see is if you are gonna keep the neural wristband and not make it into a smartwatch configuration, then please make the, the next iteration of the neural wristband USB-C. Meta released a proprietary charging cable for the neural wristband, in my opinion, that's a horrible thing to do because if you lose that particular cable, now you can't charge your band. If it gets damaged in any way, maybe you spilt something on it, it gets lost, any, anything happens to it, and now you can't charge the band. Whereas if it was charged by USB-C, we'd have plenty of cables, right? You probably have 20 different cables that could charge this if you lost one. The next thing that I'd like to see added is better iOS integration. So right now, if someone messages me or calls me, I can see it in my display that they're calling who it is and if they're messaging me who it is and what the message is and they can ha even have it read out to me. However, I can't respond because the iOS integration with the glasses isn't perfect. They're making it more of a closed off environment in my opinion where they wanna kinda add their own apps and force you to use their apps and force you to use what they got going on, which most companies and most brands do that kind of stuff, so it's not surprising. However, it's not something that I wanna see and it's definitely not ideal. So I wanna be able to see my messages pop up and I wanna be able to actually physically interact with that message. I wanna be able to go into my messages, tap on a message, and actually start typing. That's another thing that I wanted to mention too is that we still don't have the typing feature that Mark showed off and was actually one of the things that actually worked on the keynote. So isn't that kind of ironic that the things that worked in the keynote we don't even have and the things that didn't work we do so you know it's strange i'd like to see meta get it together like they really need to get it together in the second generation of meta ray-ban displays and the last thing that i'd like to see added and i kind of touched bases again on this earlier was different color options so i like the matte ones again i'd like to see and of course we have the, the sand ones which they do look pretty nice in my opinion my first impressions and thoughts of a sand kind of color for glasses was that it wouldn't go with everything it wouldn't go with outfits it wouldn't go with shirts it wouldn't but it actually is a real subtle sand color so it does actually go with everything so it is kind of low-key neutral so i'd have to say that it is a nice color so i'd say keep the sand color keep the shiny color add the matte color and maybe add some other bold colors maybe like a white a red blue who knows People like to express themselves with glasses and eyewear. Hey, look at what they're doing with all their other pairs of glasses, right? Oakley, Meta, Houston's. I wouldn't say I have outrageous colors, but they have the, uh, where well, they have the, was it the Sky Diver or the Diver Blue, right? They have the, uh, the all white ones, which is actually supposed to be a warm gray color, but everybody calls them white and the white ones with the red ruby lenses and the white ones with the 24 karat gold lenses are really you know loud right they're really standout-ish so meta is known for creating standout-ish and offering a lot of different colors on their glasses so why not do that with the meta ray-ban displays now i know these are the first generation and these are almost like a prototype pretty much so they want to see how much demand there is if there's no demand they won't make more right they're not going to make millions and millions and millions of these if they're only going to sell a hundred thousand so i kind of understand just offering one or two colors on this first generation however now you see that they're a hit and that people want them so all i'm saying is add more color options for people to be able to express themselves through their eyewear now those are 15 features that i would like to personally see added in the second generation meta ray-ban displays However, let me know down in the comments section below what things you would like to see added, what specific features, what specific apps, and what would you like to see specifically added to the second generation Manta Ray-Ban displays. Hey, maybe Mark will take a look at this video. I know he won't, but you never know. So go ahead and leave down in the comments again what you would like to see on your Manta Ray-Ban displays. Now you can leave everything from a lower price tag, dull displays, let me know what you would like to see and what would actually get you to purchase these if you're on the fence or if you're not even interested in these. What would get you interested and if you're on the fence again, what would get you to actually purchase these? If this video was informative and helped you out in any way, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell notification to be notified of future content. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you guys for watching. My name is Aaron and I'll see you guys on the next one.